schools. The F-35 test pilots are preparing for their most dangerous challenge to date. Green light, green flag, flying in three. They're going to try a method of landing that's never been attempted on an aircraft carrier before. It carries great risks, but could revolutionize carrier operations. The F-35B is designed to stop in mid-air before landing vertically using immense downward thrust, like a rocket in reverse. But it can only do that if it's as light as possible. Any unexpended weapons brought back would have to be ditched into the sea, at great financial, not to mention environmental cost. So the deceptively simple plan is to add forward speed to the vertical landing, flying half like a rocket and half like a plane to give extra lift under the wings. Groundbreaking, never been done in the world, never been done to an aircraft carrier. And it's called a shipborne rolling vertical landing because the aircraft is going to make an approach to the deck. It's about 40 miles an hour and it's going to come down on about a seven degree glide path, so about twice as steep as an airliner would make, and then come to a stop under its own brakes. By driving the aeroplane through the air, we're generating more lift, and that lift will allow us to bring more weapons back. So far, the pilots have just been making tentative approaches to test speed and height combinations. But no one has yet attempted a shipborne rolling vertical landing for real. So what a shipborne rolling vertical landing is, is coming in in that semi-jetborne mode, 40, 50, 60 miles an hour, something like that, and then coming down the hill with overtake on the boat. And then you hit the deck, you roll out, you hit the brakes, and you come to a stop. There are two things that we care about. One is coming in too low, and either having a stern strike there, or the back end of the aircraft, which is actually angled up. So this clearance between the stern and the nozzle there, we don't want that to get too small. So we care about coming in too low here, and obviously, we care about that. That's a disaster. That's a disaster. Both of those are catastrophic. The man who will attempt the world's first ever shipborne rolling vertical landing is Pete Whizzer Wilson. With over 30 years flying experience in the RAF and the Navy, Whizzer now flies as a civilian test pilot. How are you feeling this morning? I'm excited. Uh, actually, really, um, I'm tingling, you know, I'm tingling with, with uh, anticipation for going out and doing it. And about every two minutes, I'm playing it back in my head. This is a, a moment in history. Um, this is something phenomenal that's about to happen because the capability that this will bring for the F-35 to be able to bring back more weight to Queen Elizabeth means that the UK military is going to be able to operate the F-35 in a way that the, the uh, other forces cannot. This will be a first for everyone. Not only WIZA, but the aircraft handlers too. They will have to be ready for every eventuality. Option one. Right, SRVL. Yeah. yeah. If he misses, he's overshoot, and then it's just a normal transition to four spot, right? Who's going to line it up? Billy's going to line it up. Who's parking? Ads is going to park it. That's them two, so we'll I'll take it stand by. Stand by, in case we have to out. spin it. Two launch checks now, said launch. Ready? Okay. Pass. Ready? Press the mission to launch the jet. Launch the jet. about to do with the shipborne rolling vertical landing has never been done before and we're proving a concept so cutting edge and so innovative the world's watching Wizard has to get this just right his rate of descent and speed has to be spot on all right good plateau on center line this couldn't be more critical He's using vertical thrust to keep him up and horizontal thrust to push him forward. Remember, he's half rocket and half aeroplane. Slightly high, then correcting. The slightest mistake now, and he could smash into the deck 
and become a fireball. All right, why is the speed not gone to where I want it to? Wave off, wave off, wave off. First attempt too high and too fast. Wizard goes round again. All right, 2.3 on the gas. We're doing all right. This could be last second. He must now follow the tram lines all the way. That horizontal line halfway down is his point of no return. Beyond that, there's no turning back. He'll be committed to land. Wave off, wave off, waving off. Second attempt, too fast, too low. Another two seconds and he would have been committed and probably crash landed. Let's take it around for another go. They have to do a precise helmet alignment because all the information is displayed in the helmet. If you don't get a perfect alignment, you can't do an accurate approach. So he's just got another one, hopefully we'll get the SRV. Okay, coming down now. All right, it's just swing around a little bit. It's below 200 feet. Okay, coming down now. I'm on the centre line. I'm on the centre line. All right, looking good. On the centre line, slightly low now. A little low. Indicating good. On centre line. There's one 50 feet, 140. Committed. Deppy. A lot of noise. Touch down. On centre line. On the brake. And off the brake. And stationary. Beautiful. Let's calm down a little bit. Gotta tell you, that was surreal. Fantastic. Absolutely brilliant approach, just what we expected. Landed just in the right position and, uh, and came to a stop in a very short distance. So, uh, yeah, a proven, uh, the first step in proving the capability, which is, uh, which is fantastic. That was so exciting, and to finally get the first one done and see it happen just like it happens in the simulator was just the most special experience of my entire career, I think. Uh, there, it wasn't without its stress, you know, at the time it didn't work out exactly perfectly as we intended it to, uh, but we ultimately executed it safely and professionally. Uh, we got the data that we wanted and now we're ready to move on and do more and I'm looking forward to doing the next one because that was pretty special.